guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and ready to explore because it's Vulture Awareness Day tomorrow and we are going to the new forest to meet some vultures. Surprise! In this episode, we are gonna dive into the world of vultures to find out if they were feared or revered in ancient history. What are some of the amazing facts about some vulture species that we're gonna meet? as well as their connection to rabies, which I don't think you'll see coming, so stay tuned to the end of the episode. Now I got my mask, thanks to my friend Stacy from So Into Crafting, and we are gonna go on an adventure. Let's head down to the new forest, but before we do, if you're new here and you wanna learn all about animals in the wild, pop culture, or in captivity, hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, let's get in the car and go. The drive to Liberty's Owl, Raptor, and Reptile Center was certainly something. It wasn't too hot and wasn't too cold, so perfect for a Goldilocks's adventure to find some vultures. We also saw some cows, donkeys, and horses on our way through the new forest. Ah, there's one here. Now that we made it to the center, let's go find some vultures. All vultures are scavengers. They mainly feed on carrion, therefore they help to clean up the environment. The majority of vultures have featherless faces, with bald or almost bald head and necks. They all have large wingspans. This helps them soar virtually effortlessly in search for a meal. And all vultures have strong stomach acids. This is putting it lightly, for they can eat rotting meat, even from diseased animals. These strong stomach acids kill the disease within their digestive systems. Vultures can be divided into two groups, Old World and New World. Old World vultures can be found in Africa, Asia, and Europe. Old world vultures typically construct some sort of nest, and they also have stronger gripping feet that have large talons. Therefore, they can't run. Whereas new world vultures are actually able to run if they need to move aside. New world vultures are also a bit creative and don't actually build nests. Instead, they find protected locations, such as abandoned buildings or caves, to lay their eggs. And whereas all old world vultures locate their food with sight, there are some species of new world vultures that rely on their excellent sense of smell. Only new world vultures cool themselves by defecating down their legs and using that liquid for evaporative cooling. New world vultures also don't have a voice box, so they can only hiss and grunt. Take a look at this. The Stele of the Vultures from the early Sumerian era. This was written as war propaganda. One side of the Stele shows vultures carrying the severed heads of enemy soldiers, which no doubt inspires fear in the hearts of enemies. In the life of Marius, written by Plutarch, we find out that vultures are also one of the earliest documented birds to be banded. As Marius was leading campaigns against the Germanic tribes in Europe, two vultures actually followed his armies into battle. One day, the army's blacksmith forged two bronze collars, while the troops went out and captured the two birds. They then put the collars around them and released them. Therefore, later when the soldiers spotted the birds that were recognizable by their collars flashing in the sun, the morale of the soldiers would be raised. Vultures also played an important role in the legends about Rome. According to the legend of Remus and Romulus, the brothers who were partially raised by a she-wolf, they decided that the question of Rome's kingship would be left to omens. As the story goes, Remus spotted six vultures and took that to mean he was to rule the city but later Romulus saw 12 vultures. The question now hinged on whether it was more important 
to see the birds first, or that Romulus saw more of them. Eventually, Remus was killed, either by Romulus or by another person, and thus Romulus became the first king of Rome by default. And you can't talk about ancient history without bringing in the ancient Egyptians. These guys respected so many different types of animals, including the vulture. At least five different species of old world vultures lived in ancient Egypt. And it's believed that the vulture was in fact the first protected species, for one of Egypt's rulers had declared the death penalty for anyone who killed one of these animals. As the vulture was associated with the goddess Nekpet. Now let's take a closer look at some vultures. This is the African hooded vulture. They're a bit scruffy looking and smaller than other African vultures. However, this means that they can rise higher on the air thermal faster and thus often being the first one to spot a tasty carcass. Yum. They are found across sub-Saharan Africa in a wide variety of habitats, including open plains, savanna, forest, coastal areas, and even towns and villages. They are also classified by the IUCN Red List as being critically endangered. Hooded vultures are quite clever because they follow humans in agricultural fields, where they pick out the grubs and the insects that are upturned by plowing the fields. However, this sadly has resulted in human-animal conflict, and the vultures have been heavily hunted and poisoned, thus their numbers are so low in the wild. And even though they eat dead things, that doesn't mean they're dirty. After all, we've just watched this vulture clean its feathers for so long. These guys quickly stole my heart. Meet the white-headed vulture. They're medium-sized birds and have very charismatic faces that are colorful. In fact, these vultures start off having dark heads as juveniles, and then the plumage changes to white as they age. They too are critically endangered and have suffered massive losses due to poisoning. It's tricky for vultures because only one egg is laid and about 61% of pairs do not actually breed every year because they have a dependent chick from the previous year. So it does get tricky to quickly see the influence that conservation efforts may have on this species. And while they usually feed on fresh carrion, white-headed vultures have actually been known to actively hunt live prey, including stranded fish, termites, and locusts. The white-backed vulture is the most common and widespread vulture in sub-Saharan Africa, However, they too are listed as endangered. My favorite fact about these guys is that at rest, a group of them is called a committee or a venue or even a vault. In flight, they are known as a kettle. Ah, and a familiar face to me, a Californian, the turkey vulture, a new world vulture. These guys are believed to have a very good sense of smell and able to find carrion by odor, which is quite unique in the world of vultures. This guy looks to be sunbathing, spreading their wings to allow the sun to blast away the chill of the night, and also take some time to preen his feathers and make sure he looks good, which he does because he's frankly adorable. So now that we've met some species of vulture, why do they even need an awareness day? Well, unfortunately, as you've seen, quite a few species are listed as endangered or critically endangered. In fact, in the 1990s, 99% of the Indian subcontinent's vultures were wiped out by the use of the veterinary drug diclofenac. This was given to cattle 
but proved lethal to vultures feeding on their carcasses. Luckily, organizations like BirdLife helped push for a ban of veterinary diclofenac in India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. This allowed for populations to slowly stabilize, but yet they are still nowhere near what they once were. As we've seen, vultures usually only lay one egg at a time, and sometimes don't even lay more than one because they're busy rearing the chick from the previous year. So these things do take time. Speaking of time, one study in India and Pakistan found that a 99.9% .9 decline of vultures over the course of roughly 10 years or so correlated with an increase of 7 million in the feral dog population. During this time, there were 39 million dog bites in the region, which then led to an estimated 48,000 human deaths from rabies. This means that without nature's cleanup crew of the highly efficient vulture, other animals will fulfill their ecological niche of cleanup crew, and sometimes these animals can come back to bite us, quite literally. African vulture populations have collapsed in the last 30 years, with poisoning being the major threat. And as we've seen, vultures are vitally important, both ecologically and culturally. So further losses of populations will be devastating to the African continent. They'll lose their cleanup crew, essentially. Scientists have seen that carcasses of elephants that were killed by poachers and laced with poison are a clear and present danger to African vultures. However, with your help and the Hawk Conservancy, you guys can help make a difference for vultures that are affected by poisoning. In fact, you can help them with donating funds for a poison response kit. For more information, check out the links in the description below. Well, I'm back home in sunny Winchester, and that's it for today's adventure into the world of vultures. If you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who needs to learn to love vultures just a little bit. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you around. Bye!